guys welcome again to this session on gems of geometry and uh, today we are going to take up one more interesting theorem and the name also is very interesting the name is butterfly theorem right so by looking at the impression of the image you can say or this figure you can see that you know there is some kind of a uh, butterfly which is uh, you know you know getting um, you know prominently manifested over here so for, for example what i'm trying to say is just observe the shape a d m c b right so a d m c b looks like a butterfly during our childhood we used to make some kind of a uh, thread structure right so using a thread we used to make and make a butterfly you know uh, you know some kind of structure with uh, fingers and threads i don't know if you you have done the same thing in your childhood but it looks similar to that so that's called butterfly theorem and what exactly is the theorem the theorem says that uh if a chord pq is there on a circle and m being the midpoint of that chord uh then if you let two more chords pass through m let's say a b and c d are the two extra chords which are passing through m and you join ad and bc like that so ad and bc are joined and uh, let the point of intersection of pq and ad be x and that of pq and bc be y okay so these are two point of intersections now um what the theorem suggests is m also would be the midpoint of xy okay so xy is this segment and m also will be the midpoint of x y right so p q is a chord m is the midpoint you are letting two chords pass through m a b and c d find the point of intersection of a d and p q call it x find the point of intersection of b c and p q call it y and you will be surprised to see that m is the midpoint of x y as well that is x and y are equidistant come what may as in you know whatever be the configuration so just to validate let's see whether that is true so what we are going to do, going to do is we are going to change the configuration of this um diagram and let's see for different positions of all these cards and points whether actually the value or the theorem is valid so let me change the position of the points now and keep an eye on my and mx and you know you can also see that pm and qm would be same because m happens to be the midpoint right so here is what i am doing is i am changing the position of uh the points on the circle right and i'm also going to change this configuration so that you can see that at whatever be the configuration m is the midpoint of x y right so it always so it's coming closer can you see that it's coming closer and eventually it will merge so hence x y uh m is midpoint of x y right so this is kind of validated through demonstration what remains to be done is to to be you know uh, let's try and prove this analytically so that's what we are going to do in the next part of the session so uh, let's go to proving so now having verified the butterfly theorem through geogebra software it's now uh, remaining to prove the theorem itself correct so i have stated the theorem first and uh, have done some construction which i'll anyways be explaining in some time and then we'll go for the proof okay so the statement of the butterfly theorem says through the midpoint m of a chord pq of a circle any other chords ab and cd are drawn chords ad and bc meet pq at point x okay and y then m is the midpoint of xy so we have to prove that m is the midpoint of this xy here m is the midpoint of xy okay so let's try and prove before that we have to do some prerequisites so that it becomes easier for those who are not initiated into proving or let's say similar triangles and other things so we will do some kind of basic work groundwork preparation and then we'll go for the proof so for doing this proof there is some construction uh, so i will list that down so construction is this so what all constructions have been done so i have drawn xe perpendicular to ab 
and uh, xf xf is perpendicular to cd okay similarly yg is perpendicular to cd and uh, yh is perpendicular to ab right this is the construction now you have to be very clear with similar triangles here so we are we are going to use a lot of similarity principles so hence let's try first of all uh, proving that triangle so these are similar triangles pair of similar triangles i'm going to write so please be you know careful and uh, keep that in your mind so triangle x f m is similar to triangle um y g m y g m i hope there is no problem in this and why is this because uh, one is this vertically opposite angle and then other one is this 90 degree so they are by a a similarity right so by a a similarity criterion right so this is one yeah so please bear in mind let me just take away these okay so you know similarly you can you can prove that this is point number 1 point number 2 triangle uh, similarly xem xem is now similar to triangle y and uh, y h m correct same same logic a a similarity so i'm not going to explain you can stop or pause the v video and then prove for yourself okay now third one also is this if you see triangle x ae is similar to triangle uh ycg ycg and why is that uh very clearly if you see this angle a is equal to angle c angles in the same segment okay and angles subtended by an arc on the same segment is equal so that ways and there are two right angles again so by a a similarity they are also similar so i can write that as a a similarity here also right very good now one more similar triangle set i can write and that is xdf triangle xdf and triangle y b h y b h and uh, again by same a a similarity i hope i have written the orders of the vertices in the correct order right so x d f yes and y b h very good so uh, why because uh, again there these are the two angles in the same segment by same arc and 90 degrees so hence no doubts about it that these two triangles are similar right so for neatness we'll just remove these marks very good now if you see i have uh, kept or i have called pm pm you can sorry xm can you see and these are some things which we have made xm is equal to x and ym i have written as y for convenience and pr a n b are self explanatory p is xe r is xf b is yh and a is gy right so this is clear if this is clear let's now go for the proof how to uh, go for the proof so let me now write it here now since the triangles are similar can you not say that uh, x upon y and let's take the triangle x em so this triangle and this triangle first take these two triangles so x upon y will be equal to p upon b isn't it similarly let it be one similarly let me just remove all of this yes and this was y this is y okay now let's take the other two triangles which one these these two triangles here also x upon y can be written and what is that my dear friends so x upon y is equal to um p upon a no x upon y is r upon a sorry r upon a right by similarity also okay very good 
Now, um, if you see, we multiply these equations together. So what will you get? X square by Y square is equal to P upon B into R upon A, which is equal to P upon A into R upon B. And why did I do this? You will get to know a little while later. Okay, P by A. What's P by A, guys? If you see, can I say P by A is equal to P by A? Look at the figure now. So this is P. This is A. So P by A will be this side upon that side. Isn't it? Similar triangles we just proved. So XA upon YC. And similarly, R by B, if you look carefully, will be DX or XD by YB. Isn't it? Now, if you remember the theorem where if you have a circle and there are two chords like that intersecting at point, let's say M and uh, let's say this is AB, this is CD. So we know that AM into MB is equal to DM into MC. Correct? This is a theorem which we have proved proven earlier. So you can check this in the previous videos, right? So we using this theorem, can I not say XA by this top one, XA by XD should be XA. So look at the figure, where is X? Here is X, where is A? Here is A. And where is D? Here is D. So AD is the chord here, isn't it? AD is the chord and X is the point of intersection. So can I not write that as px into x q okay just to make it more clear i can write px into qx so this is into sign okay so let me just demarcate it like that so px into qx px into qx is equal to xa into xd by this theorem similarly by in the denominator yc yb check yc yb so here is b here is y here is c so bc is the chord and pq is the intersecting chord so you can again write qy qy into yp yp okay so now what is px guys if you see px is nothing but pm minus x pm minus x look carefully and what is qx 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 is uh, qm into qm sorry qm plus x am i right so qx is qm plus x yes because mx is small x now qy where is q so here is Q, look at this, here is Q, QY will be simply MQ minus MY, isn't it? So MQ minus MY, what can I write that as? So QM minus X again, y, sorry, minus Y, minus Y, I can write that as QM minus Y and uh, Q, Q, uh, next one is YP, right? This YP, YP is nothing but YM plus MP. So YM, YM is Y small y plus MP. So PM like that. And we know that M is the midpoint of PQ. So clearly PM is equal to MQ. This was the starting point guys. PM is equal to MQ. So what would this relation become? This will simply become PM and let it be, let's say small s. Okay, for convenience so that we can write now. So this is S minus X times S plus X divided by S minus Y, S plus Y. Okay, so and where did we start from? X square, Y square, right? So this relation is basically nothing but X square by Y square is equal to S square minus X square and S square minus Y square. S minus X, S plus X is s square minus x square so now from here cross multiplication x square s square minus x square y square is equal to sorry this is y square guys so y square s square minus 
x square y square correct yeah and now if you see this can be eliminated and since s is a non zero quantity what is s guys s was pm isn't it pm it's a non zero quantity so you can eliminate s square from both sides as well so you get x square is equal to y square so you get x square is equal to y square and that means x is equal to y right this is what we needed to prove x equals to y that means what if x equals to y then we can say x is, see x is equal to y we prove that x is equal to y when is that possible when m is the midpoint of x y so hence you can say m is the the midpoint of x y right hence root okay i hope you understood the proof this is what is called butterfly theorem folks thank you